50 years of weather here in the south has certainly given us something to talk about. We've just had the coldest December on record, but in 1963, the average daily temperature stayed below zero for three consecutive months, and parts of Oxfordshire plunged to minus 17 Celsius. Of course, children love the snow, as we can see in this home movie filmed in Surrey. But although the ice was thick, the novelty wore pretty thin, and people decided to clear blocked roads themselves. Now, let's turn up the heat. The summer of 1976 wasn't the hottest ever, but it was one that sticks in many people's minds because it was both hot and dry. The drought was so severe that water authorities were forced to control supplies. Eventually, fires broke out. The fire appears to have started at the Matcham Scrambling Course, about two miles over there. It's come past a country club, and now it's threatening a group of small holdings. In complete contrast, floods turned the Isle of Portland into an actual island in 1979. Cars were turned upside down, but they wouldn't have been much use anyway because the road to Weymouth was completely underwater. Residents took to boats. Hot, cold, wet, that just leaves windy. On the 15th of October 1987, a deep depression formed on the western side of the British Isles. And on the evening news, Michael Fisher's forecast failed to predict the approaching storm. Earlier on today, apparently, a woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Well, if you're watching, don't worry, there isn't. In fact, high winds ripped buildings apart and brought down 15 million trees across the south. Now, to get an idea of what conditions were like that night, I've come here to Southampton University Wind Tunnel. I'm being tied down so that I won't blow away as the technician Mike increases the wind speed. That fan is a thousand horsepower. Well, the wind speed in here is now 43 miles per hour, at the same speed as the storm in Dorset. And the wind grew stronger as the storm moved east. Rescue efforts are continuing at Barton on Sea to rescue a man in a partially collapsed block of flats. At Thorny Island, the wind had increased to 68 miles per hour. Shanklin's Victorian Pier is now little more than a shattered monument. And at Littlehampton, a group of 16 houses all but swept away. The airport suffered too. At Goodwood, light aircraft were turned over. And the highest recorded wind speed was at Shoreham Airport, 83 miles per hour with gusts of 115. To show me what that was like, Mike's pushing the wind tunnel to its maximum, 94 miles per hour. <laughs> site at Peacehaven flattened by furious gusts from the sea. Almost nothing was left standing. At least 15,000 trees were lost at Wakehurst Place in West Sussex. It took three years to clear up the damage. Power lines were brought down and some woke up to find a very different view from their homes. Fortunately, storms like this happen only about once in a hundred years and I'll do my best to warn you if I see one coming. <laughs> Literally away. I think I'm dribbling. <laughs>